Welcome here. Thanks for joining us to celebrate Christmas at Lakeview Church. I'm Allison Lauber, and I'm one of the pastors here. And I also am the mother of four children and one daughter-in-law. And I have shared care and custody of those kids with their dad for many years. And a couple of years ago, he texts me this SOS that reads, uh, we need to get together right away. There's something up with kid four. Now, you guys probably all have a kid four in your family, right? We all have a kid four. It was not unusual, or it is not unusual, to have something up with kid four. And so I agreed right away to go for coffee, and we met the next morning at Starbucks. And when I arrived at Starbucks, I went and sat down, and there was kind of this shifty-looking guy in the corner, and I didn't really notice him because I was busy worrying about kid four. But as I sat down, he increased his odd behavior. So for instance, we were both sitting there and looking out together. And instead of looking out in the same direction as me, he kind of shifted his body, crossed his legs, and started sipping his coffee super loud and then like clearing his throat and coughing. And so, of course, I was getting increasingly uncomfortable and trying to give him the universal sign for leave me alone, which is, of course, texting, right? But what I was actually doing was I was texting uh, my kid's dad, who was standing in line getting coffee, and asking him to check out the weird dude in the corner and tell me if he was dangerous. But do you know what happened then? The weird guy in the corner gets up, and shifts over a seat and sits right beside me. And just as I'm about to get up and move to the other side of the coffee shop, the weirdo leans in so that I'm forced to turn my head and look at him, and I see not only a weird, disheveled guy, but also the fruit of my loins, kid number one, who has returned early from a year away in New Zealand and has orchestrated this surprise arrival with his dad. <laughs> so, you think your kids need counseling. <laughs> There's photographic evidence of that day, courtesy of dad. Oh, there I am, concerned citizen number one right there texting, and there's the weirdo in the corner. Look at him looking at me with those shifty eyes. <laughs> Speaking of surprise arrivals, listen to this. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph, and the virgin's name Mary. And upon entering, Gabriel greeted her, Good morning, you're beautiful with God's beauty, beautiful inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. Now I doubt that Gabriel showed up looking bedraggled and shifty, slurping his coffee loudly in the corner. Probably he was glowing with like a radiant light and didn't sport a man bun and a beard. We do know though that Mary was not expecting him. The passage says she was thoroughly shaken. Likely she was busy doing what all young women did in those days, fetching the water, baking the bread, getting ready for the day. And she had her mind set on other things. She was thinking about the day ahead. Maybe she was thinking about her upcoming wedding to Joseph and her future. And then Gabriel shows up and changes her course completely. The story continues. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. And he will be great. He will be called son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will rule Jacob's house forever. No end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, but how? I've never slept with a man. And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, the power of the highest hover over you, and therefore the child you bring to birth will be called Holy, Son of God. Nothing you see is impossible with God. Now this message was supposed to be good news. 
We look, we look back on it now and we celebrate it as good news, but I'm not sure that if I had been Mary receiving that message for the first time, if I would have received it as good news. She had plans. She had her future mapped out. She was gonna get married and build a home and have kids and fill her life with all of the things that a young woman filled her life with in those days. But this angel interrupts it all and invades her space and sends her life shooting in a different direction like a pinball. Now, I don't know what brought you here today or what stories you carry with you into this room. Perhaps you're not here of your own volition. You came to visit your in-laws and this is what you have to do when you visit your in-laws at Christmas. Or maybe you're here because you love it. You always come to Christmas Eve service. The candlelight and the carols are part of tradition. They're part of the celebration. We're glad you're here, no matter why you're here or how you arrived. But I wonder if maybe this space and time is the space and time where your story, whatever you bring with you, overlaps with this old story of Mary. Specifically, who or what is invading your space right now? Eyes forward, don't look at your family sitting beside you, or glare at the kid kicking the back of your seat. Maybe you have literal space invaders in the form of family and friends staying in your house right now. They're taking up square footage on air mattresses on your floor. They're eating your food and giving you advice and political opinions you didn't ask for, telling your kids how to behave. Space invaders can be really annoying, but they can also be devastating. So perhaps another question for you is this. What is interrupting your life? What unexpected thing has popped up and is pulling you off of your planned course and shooting your life in a different direction like a pinball? You had it all planned out. It was up and to the right, and then it stalled, and now it's starting to tank. The relationship didn't go the way it was supposed to. You thought you'd get into the school or get the job. You thought you'd have the house, the spouse, the kids. An unexpected death or an illness popped up. Maybe even an unplanned baby. Unwelcome invasions can happen in varied and assorted ways. But what they have in common is that they're uninvited. We didn't see them coming. And when they wreck our plans, they leave us feeling rattled, shaken, and bewildered. But I wonder if we turned and looked squarely at what we aren't welcoming in our lives, if these things might turn out to be different than what we thought. I wonder if the interruptions, the invasions, could instead be annunciations, invitations, declarations of the beginning of something new could they have smuggled inside of them the potential to change things for the better? This passage says that Gabriel greets Mary with these words, good morning, you're beautiful with God's beauty. And in some versions, these words are changed to greetings, favored one. And favored one means this, the one chosen to receive grace, the one chosen to carry something new. In Mary's case, this was God incarnate. She had Jesus growing in her very body. So in effect, this is what Gabriel is saying. Greetings, Mary. What appears as an interruption is actually the beginning of life. It's the beginning of a new thing. And there's a nugget in here for us too. Could what, we be, what we've been interpreting as an invasion of our space actually be an invitation to receive grace. To receive and show grace in our families, the chance to let love and kindness and hospitality and patience flow through us. And in the more devastating interruptions where it feels like it's only loss, like it's only empty space, maybe instead it's clearing out space for us to receive something new. Maybe these interruptions reveal a surprising fresh start that we could never have manufactured on our own. Maybe they're a gift that we couldn't recognize in the first place. 
Maybe what appears to be a weirdo in the corner is your kid who needs a shave. And the only thing required to receive this grace, to receive this new start, is to say yes, is to assent to it, is to say yes to the interruption, to turn and look at it and receive it and welcome the space invader. Mary said yes, and it changed the course of history. And Mary said, yes, I see it all now. I'm the Lord's maid ready to serve. Let it be with me just as you say. And then the angel left her. Mary's yes to the interruption in her life is what brings us here today, not your in-laws. We're here to celebrate the great interruption of God incarnate who still shows up in the unexpected. Jesus came in the interruption and it changed everything. Will you too say yes to the interruption of grace? Will you be open to the new things that God has in mind for you? Will you be ready for a change, a good change? When I didn't recognize kid number one in Starbucks, it felt dangerous, I was afraid. But it ended up being a beautiful interruption. And kid number one has been an interruption from the day I found out I was expecting him. But he also has been one of the ways that I have received and channeled grace. Thanks, God, for the interruptions. May you be able to receive the invitation of grace smuggled in your interruptions this Christmas season.